this is a good example of how sometimes I'll, I'll use the slide function to find and make little loops. Um, I have a recording of a room mic in a session that's just people, writers vibing out with some ideas and it's just people singing along to a loop. And nothing ever came out of this session or we didn't finish the song or something, so I just had this recording and I noticed this little clip of audio. Well, first of all, I, I took this, I, I noticed this little clip of audio that I liked, which is just a repeating sample. So I created a loop out of that first and then put a bunch of um, effects on it and a little Alter Boy and uh, a couple Fab Filter plugins, lowered the pitch. And there's a part of that sample where a writer in the room kind of goes, ooh, and it makes a funny like little sound. So I was like, oh, that's kind of fly. So what I did was create a loop out of that. And sometimes if, if I want to say like find something kind of interesting, I'll use the slip function to search inside that wave file to find another another like combination of sounds or, or loops and sometimes you get really interesting results. Like you kind of use chaos to find order. I mean, obviously sometimes you have to search for a while, but basically after searching enough, I came up with this loop and then from there put some, some chords to it. And I mean, sometimes when I'm trying to get inspired to write a chord progression, I'll find a loop first and then, you know, once I get that going, then I'll start playing keys over the loop. So I had this progression, I wrote this progression after putting that loop together. So there's another, uh, and for example, like that, that same, this, like this song, this track, for instance, goes into another part. It's this. And the funny thing is that this sample is actually, this little, is actually made up of this little clip. This little sample right here, if you, let's see if I can shrink it back down to size. That's actually the original sample stretched out. And with little Alter Boy on it, same kind of uh, processing. So using the uh, real-time transpose function, I transpose bits of that sample to make this pattern. So basically, most of the content of this track, or the real like source that makes it identifiable, comes from you know a tiny portion of audio of a random writing session one day and using the, the slip function and just how fast I can cut and edit stuff in Cubase, I made this little loop out of it. So here's an example of why the slip function is a whole lot of fun. If I, I synced that, um, that little sample to my, to my tempo. So now I'm gonna cut up pieces of this sample using the slip function, I'm gonna search for other fragments inside of it, like. So. Oh, here. This has a little bit of a snap in it, so what I'm gonna do is get rid of that with the time stretch, like so. And then, I mean, I can also adjust in real time the pitch. Or actually, yeah. So now that I have like different, here, okay, here's like where you get kind of crazy and where you can use total chaos to find order. Since I just cut that sample into four different 
I used, I'm using like four different areas of the same sample, right? With the slip function, I went and searched for little bits that I like and created this weird loop. Now I, I select all and I'm using the slip function on all of them at the same time to literally go to different random places and find, you know, I mean, you get the most random results, but but it's like, you know, that's kind of cool. You could just, like, these are the kind of weird features that I incorporate into my creative process. You know, and, it, and it's something like, it's kind of like really using chaos to find order and be inspired by random, you know, organizations of files that you wouldn't have, things you wouldn't have, like, put in place on purpose, basically. So that's how I use the slip function. Um, see, that's awesome. <laughs> 